Well, hi there again. This is Caleb Jones. This is the Sovereign CEO Podcast. And I help people just like you how to create location-independent income, specifically through your own location-independent business, move to a less bad country, or at least set up an international backup plan and do all these things for very little money. And today, I'm gonna discuss a topic that a lot of you have been asking me about for a long time, and that is investing in foreign real estate. Now, here's the tricky part of this. I have a rule when it comes to my content. I've said this many times, so if you've followed me for a long time, you know what I'm about to say. I do not teach things that I have not personally done. It is my rule. And as of this recording, Technically speaking, it's a little complicated, and to explain why it's complicated, I have to go into details of my financial life, and I don't do that. But technically speaking, as of the date of this recording of this podcast, I have not yet actually purchased any foreign real estate. I have not done this yet. I'm going to do this. I'm working on this now. But I have not done this yet. So be aware, for the rest of this podcast, I'm not teaching you how to do it because I haven't done it. The only thing I can do is relay to you the things that I do know about it, since I do know several things about it because I've researched this a lot and I'm in the middle of the process. And I don't even like discussing this because I haven't done it, but enough of you have bothered me about this that I thought it would be okay to do a quickie podcast on the overview of why you may want to do this, the advantages of doing this, the complications of doing this, and other generalities. I'm not going to give you any detail whatsoever on how to do this or the particulars, the how-to particulars, because I have not done it. Now, that being said, I promise you that once I do this, and assuming it works out well for me, and it should, I'm usually pretty good at this kind of thing, then don't worry, I will publish an entire course <laughs> on how to buy real estate in foreign countries and how to cash in real estate in, on foreign trends and things. Don't you worry your little head. I like making money, so certainly I will teach you how to do it in great detail for a fee once I actually do this. I'm just letting you know now, this free podcast, that I haven't done it yet, so just keep that in mind. Now, why have I not purchased foreign real estate yet? There is a reason, and the reason is, the primary reason is, it's very complicated. It is not simple. It is very, very complex. It is not something you just do on a whim. It requires a lot of travel. It requires a lot of research. It requires a decent amount of money. It requires a lot of trust with certain people who are, might be difficult to trust sometimes because you don't have firsthand information. It is also a risk. It is more risky to buy real estate in markets that you're not familiar with. There are a whole lot of factors you need to be aware of if you're looking into purchasing foreign real estate. And this is especially true if you're not going to live where you purchase the real estate. So let me make that first distinction. If you're going to move to a country and, and live there permanently and spend most of the year there, then certainly yes. Once you've lived there a while, a year or two, if you then want to purchase real estate there, that would be a little safer because you know the area, you know the region, you know the economy. You can, it's easier to do research on the history of the real estate there, pricing valuations, rental comps, things like that. So that's a lot less complicated and a lot less risk. And you're physically there, so you can physically work with the banks and or the real estate agents and everyone else. So you have to fly there every time. That's one level. The second level of complexity is more what I'm talking about where you're gonna invest in foreign real estate in a country you don't live in. So that means that you're dealing with a market you are not very well versed in, you are dealing with an economy that you might not be as well versed in, you're gonna to have to hop on a plane at least several times to find the property, to close the deal, to deal with problems as they arise, even if you hire a property manager, which you will have to as a sovereign CEO location dependent and various other things that will require time and effort and money from you. Now you may say after what I just said, well, Caleb, then why would I not buy real estate in my new country where I live? Well, here's a reason. It violates five flags rules. So if you're following five flags specifically, one of the rules of five flags, and I follow all these rules, unless I'm forced to violate them temporarily for certain things, sometimes that happens, but I follow these rules, and that is you do not want assets in your country A. Country A is the country where you live, your primary residence for most of the year. And if you're following five flags rules, you don't want to own assets in that country. You just don't. It is too risky, the government has too much control over those things, and you are more exposed 
to the problems of that country because you own assets there. One of the hallmarks of Five Flags is that you live in the country, but you're not exposed to all the usual problems there that other normal people who live there who are full-time actual passport-holding citizens there. For example, I live in Dubai, and recently they just passed a law that if you are not vaccinated, you can't get on a flight. Now, here's the deal. It only applies to citizens, people who hold UAE passports. So it didn't apply to me. Bingo. That's why you don't want to have all these connections to the country in which you live, your country A, because then you are less affected. If you rent where you live in your country A, and suddenly there's an economic depression and you have to leave, you can just leave. You don't have to worry about selling the house or losing a bunch of money on your house or what have you, because you don't have that connection to that country. Also, bad things could happen to that country that you're not anticipating. I will use the example of John McAfee, who I think is a very fun, interesting guy. I loved that guy when he was still alive. He was Fantastic guy to watch. Uh, in some respects, an alpha male 2.0, although he wasn't, he was kind of insane. So he was kind of an insane alpha male 2.0. But anyway, um, he made an error. He moved out of the country, good, and he moved to, I believe, Belize. Was it Belize? Yeah, it was Belize. I'm pretty sure that's right. He moved to Belize, great. So he, he followed that model of getting out of the collapsing Western world, getting out of the United States, all good. Here's the problem. He went to Belize and he moved all of his money into Belize. So he bought a big mansion. He had a bunch of investments down there. And if you know his story, you know what happened. The government confiscated everything he had. He lost literally everything he had. He almost got killed. He escaped the country. And according to interviews that he said in interviews, he literally escaped with nothing but the shirt on his back. He lost it all. He had millions and millions and millions of dollars. And he put it all into his country A, which is the opposite of what you should do for Five Flags. So ideally, when you live a Five Flags lifestyle, in your country A, you rent, you do not own. You do not own your personal residence, and you do not own any rental property in that country. Now, you could say to me, Caleb, I don't care about Five Flags. I don't care about that. I want to own where I live. Great, that's fine. As long as you understand you're violating Five Flags models, great. If you want to own real estate still, go ahead and do that at your life. I probably will not do that. Uh, and I live in a place, Dubai, where the property markets have been depressed for about four or five years, and they're now coming back, and it's probably, a, not probably, it is, it's a really good time to buy real estate in Dubai right now, I'm still probably not going to buy there, because I don't want to violate that five flags model. If there's ever a problem with Dubai down the road, I don't want to worry about all my assets being in Dubai. Very simple. So that means you are forced to do the more complicated option of purchasing real estate into other countries where you don't live. And that would be specifically your country, in the Five Flags model, your country D. This is the country or countries where you have investments, but you don't live there and you don't have any business assets there. So that would be where you purchase your real estate. I am looking at purchasing real estate in Southeast Asia. I don't want to give you more specifics than that, which countries, what regions, but I'm looking at purchasing real estate in Southeast Asia. I'm also looking at purchasing farmland in South America. I'm looking at several different places. Paraguay is one of them, but I'm looking strongly at that. Now, why would I want to buy foreign real estate? What are the advantages of owning foreign real estate? Well, there's a bunch. Number one, if you are an American, foreign-owned real estate is one of the few assets you do not have to declare to the United States IRS. Okay? You don't have to worry about taxes. You don't have to worry about declaring it. You don't worry about a goddamn thing. You can own all the real estate you want outside of the United States. And if you're American, whether or not you live in the United States is not relevant. You don't have to declare it on your taxes at all. The U.S. government knows nothing about it and doesn't care. Not bad. By the way, it's the same exact thing with foreign-held gold or silver or precious metals. You do not have to declare that in terms of your taxes, at least as of this recording. Things may change. Who knows? But that's a big advantage if you're an American worrying about taxes and or privacy. The next advantage you have in foreign real estate is that you can purchase real estate in areas of the world that are exploding in a good way economically, that are booming economically instead of collapsing economically. Yes, the United States has seen property values skyrocket all over the country and places like Canada, places like that, but that's not of any valid reason. That's because of the Cerveza sickness and all the problems we had around the supply chain and things like that. That's not actually a real reason. America, as I've said a thousand times, is collapsing. Canada is collapsing. Europe is collapsing. Why on earth would I want to own any real estate for the long term? Clarify for that in a moment. For the long term, why would I want to do that in a collapsing country? I want to own real estate in countries that are prospering economically and are going to do very well over the next 25 years. Now, I said long term. You, there are unusual scenarios where you could convince me to purchase 
a, a cash flowing piece of property like an apartment building or something like that in a Western country because of various local factors where that might make sense in the short term or the mid term, not the long, long term. That, and that would be an exception to the rule, but there are scenarios that I could think of that could occur. Matter of fact, some have come across my desk in the last year or two. I'm like, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a compelling deal. Hmm, maybe I should do that. But anyway, long term, I don't want to own any real estate or any assets in a collapsing country. doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Now, if you're in your 70s and you want a bunch of real estate in the United States, you're probably okay. <laughs> you're probably all right. If you're a lot older than me, maybe you're fine. But at my age, I don't want to have to worry about this. So by owning real estate in an exploding economy, in a growing, prospering economy, you will make far more money on that real estate over the course of your lifetime than you would in a or in a country or region that is already at the top, i.e. the Western world, including places like Canada, New Zealand, Western Europe, and things like that. These places aren't going to grow, these places are going to decline. Places that are going to grow would be certain parts of South America and Southeast Asia. I've said many times Southeast Asia, in terms of regions, is the only region of the world, not the only country, but the only region of the world that is gonna experience massive economic growth over the next 20, 25 years. I would much rather own real estate there on real estate in the United States, which over the next 25 years is gonna be in big, big, big trouble. I just don't see any point in doing that. What we talk about in you know five flag circles is what country is gonna be the next Singapore? What country is gonna economically explode and turn to the next Singapore? Uh, that ain't the United States. That ain't Canada. That ain't the UK. That ain't Australia. It's none of those countries. It's gonna be somewhere like Cambodia, Myanmar, Colombia, Vietnam, countries like this. It's gonna be one or more of those countries that you know, 25 years from now are gonna be amazing, huge glass cities, the like of which it would compare to places like Hong Kong and Singapore. By the way, Hong Kong and Singapore are also not those countries because they're already there. They're already at the top. They, when you're at the top, there's only one direction you could go and that is down. That has certainly happened with Hong Kong. Singapore is still hanging in there. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Maybe Singapore will be okay. But I would much rather own real estate in Vietnam or Cambodia than I would in Singapore. Singapore has already made its growth. I want a country that is actively growing, not a country that is mature. Now, certainly the counter argument to that would be, well, I don't care about growth so much, I care about stability. So if I own real estate in, in Singapore, I know that real estate is stable, I know I'm not gonna lose my money. Great, so it depends what your goals are. My goal is growth. If your goal is stability, then you still don't wanna buy in the Western world, long term, right? Right. So you might just pick different countries, different non-Western countries that I would choose, and that's fine. Next aspect of owning foreign real estate is, and this is a standard model I talk about in Sovereign CEO in terms of investing, whenever you own real estate as a Sovereign CEO or Alpha Male 2.0, you must hire a property manager. You must pay them that eight, nine, 10%. You must pay them that fee. You cannot be the one that they call to, because their toilet doesn't work in the middle of the night. You can't be that person. That means you're location dependent. You need to be location independent, which means you need to suck it up and pay that seven, eight, nine percent fee to your property manager so they handle those problems for you. Yes, that means you make a little less money, but if you are smart, you will not purchase the property unless you know that property still cash flows, but if you're smart, you're not gonna buy the property in the first place until you know for sure you'll still make a profit cash flow on that property even after paying that fee. Cool? Cool. Okay. So basically, if you're not going to make money by paying that 8% or whatever it is in that country, then don't buy that property. Buy another property. Buy another property with better numbers. And this is not a podcast on how to buy real estate. Matter of fact, by the time you listen to this, we should have the mini course on how to purchase real estate or how to not get screwed in buying real estate that you can get at uh, store.calebjones.com. You can check that out if you want. Just be aware, this is a mandatory requirement for this lifestyle. You must have a property manager. You must have a property manager and pay whatever you need to pay to do that as long as you don't get completely ripped off. Whatever the standard is for the country in which you purchase that real estate. Next aspect is that, and this is part of the complications, is that you need to fully understand the local laws of foreigners owning real estate in that country. Sometimes foreigners aren't allowed to own any real estate. Sometimes they are completely allowed to own whatever they want. Sometimes they're only allowed to own it if they have a 50-50 partner. Some countries have weird laws. Like for example, Cambodia has this weird law 
where a foreigner cannot own any real estate touching the ground, which means you just are not able to buy an apartment on the first floor, but you could buy apartments on the second floor or higher. Kind of, it's kind of a loophole. So you as a foreigner could go in and you could buy a condo or flat or an apartment on the 12th floor, but you could not buy a house that's touched the ground, or you could not buy an apartment touched on the first floor because it's touched the ground. So you need to be aware of all of these laws, which means ideally you should have a contact or contacts on the ground who live in that country who can advise you. I don't think you want to do this on your own, again, unless you live in that country. If you physically live there, then fine. But if you don't live there, you're going to need some help. I would not do this on your own. I think that's very, very, very dangerous. Now, if you have bazillions of dollars, you're independently wealthy, and you can afford to lose money whenever you want, then do whatever you want. But if you're not in that category, you probably need some help in terms of navigating the neighborhoods, the property values, and the local laws regarding foreign ownership of real estate in that country. The last complication of foreign real estate is that it's gonna be very difficult, in most cases, for you to get a mortgage and get a mortgage in that country or get a mortgage in your home country and then buy real estate from that money. In other words, if you're an American, it's gonna be a little difficult to get a mortgage in, from an American bank, then take that money and go buy a house in Vietnam. That's gonna be pretty tough if not impossible. Matter of fact, I think it is impossible. I could be wrong, but I think it is. Vice versa, it's gonna be also difficult for you to go to Vietnam as an American, go to a Vietnamese bank, and ask them for you know $200,000 loan to buy some property. That's gonna be difficult. It's doable, but it's very difficult. So what you're really talking about, most people in this sphere talking about purchasing foreign real estate is cash sales. You're talking about pulling money out of your own investments and just buying this stuff cash which means you're talking about usually probably buying smaller properties that are less expensive. Now, the good news is you can buy entire properties for very little money. I was shocked the very first time I went to Sicily in Italy, island of Sicily. I'm Sicilian. I have distant family members in Sicily. And um, I was shocked. These little teeny tiny towns in the middle of the island, kind of in the middle of nowhere, you can buy an apartment, okay? Not rent, buy it. It's yours for seven, $8,000 US. You could buy one. Now, it's in Sicily, it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's a little teeny tiny town, so be aware of the internet, things like that, but you can. You can get those kinds of deals. You can buy entire homes in certain parts of the world for like 15,000 bucks, 25,000 bucks. Um, my friend of mine was talking about years ago about where you could build your own house in the Philippines on or near the beach for $10,000 US, not including the cost of the land, the land's really cheap. So you can get some really cheap shit going abroad, buying some real estate abroad. That's the advantage of you may not need a mortgage because what you're buying is so inexpensive. Kind of neat. I mean, that's another reason, or one of the many reasons why a lot of men leave the West and go live abroad is because they can live like little kings on very low income because stuff's so cheap over there. And real estate's no exception. Now, obviously, if you're going to buy real estate in Dubai or Singapore or Tokyo, uh, you're going to be spending a lot of money. That's a little different. But you get my point. You might not be able to get a mortgage, but you may not need a mortgage depending on how much money you have. So that's it. That's the overview so far on purchasing foreign real estate. Uh, as I get further into this process over the next few years, certainly I will give you more how-to information on this once I actually do it myself. Because again, my rule is I can't teach you how to do it until I've done it. I just kind of give you the general overview here of the things that I'm aware of and the things you might be aware of if you want to start or at least delve into this world. I will see you in the next podcast next week. Have fun. Bye.